Think of cheese. What pops into your mind? Creamy, tangy brie? Dry, crumbled feta? This thing that smells like gym socks? There are countless varieties, but they all basically share the same building blocks. Some milk, some salt, and some rennet. That's just enzymes that help the milk curdle. And then there's a wild card, a whole lot of microbes that scientists and cheesemakers are still trying to catalog and understand. Take this cheddar, for instance. It's called stocking hall cheddar, and it's made by Murray's Cheese in New York City. Scientists at Rockefeller University have been studying what communities of microbes live on this cheddar as it ages. Cheese is a complex ecosystem. As it matures, entire populations of bacteria, yeast, and mold rise and fall. Those microbial changes play a big role in how different cheeses develop different flavors. And today, we finally have the tools to study the changes up close. Microbiologists Ginny Garbarino and Odellis Wolwin at Rockefeller University have been collecting samples of the stocking hole cheddar for over a year. Their microbe experiments are part of an outreach program with high school students. You eat cheese all the time. Do you ever think of, you know, cheese is actually, you know, made up of microbes? You know, would it be cool to try to figure out what microbes they are? They may also have less educational motivations when it comes to the cheddar. Basically, you had to like take it away from me because I, I would have eaten the whole, the whole, the whole thing. Every week, Jeannie and Odellis went to Murray's cheese caves in Queens, where the cheddar is aged. They swapped the rinds, as well as the shelves where the cheeses are kept, and they took samples of the inside of the cheese. And about a year ago, I tagged along. Yep. Cool. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Over the past few years, Ginny and Odellis have identified the microorganisms living on the walls, shelves, and floors of the cheese caves. So by the time I arrived, they already had some idea of what usual suspects they'd find on the cheddar. So definitely expecting some lactobacillus, lactococcus, probably some mold, maybe some candida species, some yeast, maybe some streptococcus. Lactobacillus and lactococcus are the most obvious and crucial. They turn milk sugar into lactic acid, kickstarting the fermentation process. As time passes, different organisms break down milk fats and proteins to get energy. That transforms the cheese and adds flavors. The next step is to bring the samples back to the lab and sequence their DNA. That allows us to ID the types of bacteria and fungi that are found in the cheddar at different points in time. This is called microbial succession, and cheese is an ideal place to study it. Picture succession like the evolution of a forest. We can think about like a really rocky terrain, and as rain and um, other types of weather patterns are start eroding the rock, they might put some little cracks in the rock, and maybe you have some lichen start popping on, on the rock, or some mosses start growing on top of that, and then eventually maybe you get a little bit of grass, and then maybe you get some shrubs, and then maybe you get some trees, and then all of a sudden you have a forest. As cheese ages, communities of microbes change in a similar way. Just like climate change alters big ecosystems, cheesemakers can change the temperature and humidity of their caves. That will alter the moisture and acidity of the cheese, which will change the microbe profile, which in turn changes the flavor. As time progresses, you'll see that one microbe survives for about a month or two, and then another one comes along and say, hey, you know, this is actually my spot, and this environment is better for me to survive in than the other person. Microbial succession actually happens in any fermented food, like wine, pickles, or yogurt. Humans have been fermenting foods for thousands of years. Ancient Egyptians made cheese and yogurt. The Greeks and Romans drank plenty of wine. And in ancient China, people fermented veggies. But it wasn't until the 1800s that we got a better idea of what was really going on. And it all started in France with some beet juice. This guy, was um, Monsieur Vigo, was basically trying to ferment this beet juice so that they can create, uh, so they basically can create some, some beverage that people can get drunk off of. But as the beet juice was aging, Bigot hit a snag. And then all of a sudden it was souring, right? And so people could not get drunk off this stuff because it was something was happening. So they decide to bring in an expert, renowned chemist Louis Pasteur. Pasteur looks at the beet juice under a microscope and sees something weird. 
There was one set of organisms swimming around the sour juice and a different set in the boozy juice. And so it was much different. So he then identified that microbes are potentially the source of the fermentation process and specific microbes are important to achieve different results. So what does all our fancy DNA sequencing reveal about the stocking hole cheddar? I had to wait a while to find out. A year after I went to the cheese caves, Jeannie and Odellis had some preliminary results to share. At around month four or five, the bacteria on the stocking hole rind began shifting, from lots of lactobacillus and lactococcus to more brevibacterium and brachybacterium. The first is known for giving some cheese that funky food odor smell, but the other, we don't really know why it's here or what it's doing to the cheese. All of this is more of a curiosity, and a small drop in the big bucket of cheese research. But just knowing how bacteria interact on cheese gives cheesemakers like Murray's key intelligence on how their products are made. And it tells us a whole lot about the universe of microbes living all around us. Before we had access to the technology that we have now, we had no idea what was going on in the microbial world. We could only culture less than 1% in a laboratory setting. And so now what we're doing is we're able to get a more authentic snapshot of how microbes are growing in certain conditions. And, and again, I think cheese is just one of the most beautiful ecosystems to study. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe to our new Verge Science YouTube channel and check back every week for a new video. And if you're into food science, let us know what you want us to look into next. Hopefully it won't take a year. Thank you.